Okay, so hello, I am Lauren. Um, I, I will talk a bit about who I am, um, I will talk a bit about why I'm here, um, and then I'm going to talk a bit about gender representation in video games. Um, there's a little bit of an asterisk with this. I'm going to talk mostly about female gender representation in video games because I am a female perceived person, so all of my life experiences come from interacting with people in my environment as a female person. Um, so, yeah. Um, cool. So, I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. Um, one of the things about me is I'm a PhD researcher. I am based at the University of York with a group called Iggy, which is Intelligent Games and Games Intelligence. So we are a group of students who all research video games, either from like the player experience perspective or from like AI and like making the technical side of games better. They do loads of really cool research, so if you're interested in anything like that, like give them a, a Google. Um, I am more on the player experience side. When I'm doing my PhD, um, I'm looking at something called social presence, um, which is effectively digital footprints of humanity in video games. So basically, if you are in a video game and there is a character in front of you, you tend to know whether that character is a human or a bot, right? Um, so I'm kind of looking at ways to measure that, ways to measure how human they are. Um, I kind of wanted to try and create a bot that you didn't know was a bot, but apparently that's unethical, so I had to pivot a little bit. Um, and then occasionally, when my supervisor's in a good mood because I'm not supposed to be doing it, I look at gender representation in video games because it's kind of a bit of like a passion project of mine. Um, and I've published a work in progress paper in this, not in my actual PhD, again, probably a sore point for my supervisor. Um, what else am I? I am a game developer. I have been doing it for 18 months, and I am still comfortable telling you I'm a game developer. I have completed zero games, um, excluding game jams. Uh, if you don't know what game jam is, it's just where like a group of people get together over a spe specified period of time to make something um, gamey. I've almost finished two games. Um, If you asked me six months ago, I would have told you I'd almost finished two games as well. So, uh, <laughs> one of them is for my PhD. It is a multiplayer game that I'm using to, to test people with. Am I testing the game with the people? Hmm. Um, the other one is a... Um, it, that's what this character's from. It's a little interactive experience called Meds, and it's basically trying to give people a perspective of interacting with healthcare as a gender that's not their own. Um, I've started by developing the female side because, again, that is, that is my lived experience, um, and I don't want to get it wrong, so there's going to be a lot of like, research and asking people for the rest of it. Um, I'm also a Pandaren holy priest, if any of you play World of Warcraft. Um, somebody does. Um, I really hate the term gamer. I have been playing games since I was probably like, like digital games since I was about seven years old. I'm now past 30. Um, and I am more comfortable standing here telling you about healing mythic raids than I am putting the word gamer next to my name. Um, I mostly play World of Warcraft, although I do dabble in other games. Um, mostly PvE, because I don't really like other people. Um, I'm a healer, but not because I'm nice. A lot of people think that um, female presenting people are healers because, you know, they're nurturing and caring. No, I want to control whether you live or die. Um, that, that, is, that is why I do it. Um, and I like collecting things. I like collecting pets. I like collecting mounts and that sort of stuff. Um, but but I, I'm not a gamer. <laughs> That's a really weird term for me. Um, so why am I here? Um, I gave a similar talk, but with less of the stuff about me, at an academic conference for the paper that I published. Um, and people came up to me afterwards, and they were really pleased with it, and they were really happy, and they started conversations with me about their experiences. And I just thought that that was really special, um, because I'm not sure that this is something that a lot of 
people are comfortable talking about, and I think that's people from all aspects, um, all, all of the gender spectrum. Um, but the thing that really swung it for me was I was having a conversation with my best friend, and we were disagreeing about the personality traits of one of our mutual friends. And um, to cut a long story short, um, it turns out that so I have one set of friends, one set of friends um, who I don't think about my gender at all when I talk to them. We just hang out, we just play games, we just interact. We laugh at each other, you know, we have fun. And then I have this other group of friends who apparently now I do think about my gender with. Because we were discussing this, this friend's personality traits and apparently people are different when they are with me. Um, and it turned out that they... I don't know whether the reason... I don't know whether I pinned my gender onto this because I do gender research. So I think, you know, I, I am biased that this is probably at the forefront of my mind. Um, but I said the words. I said the text. It was over Discord. Um, so I ruin conversations by being female because he was saying that the conversations are less fun, they're probably more politically correct, which is possibly not a bad thing, but... Um, and, and I wanted him to turn around and say to me, no, we love having you around. And what he actually said was, yeah, it must suck. And I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, I don't have a lot of confidence to start with, but uh, we'll, we'll just throw away what's left, shall we? Um, and, like, I had to put that to one side to carry on playing with my friends because he did then say that it's not that they don't like being around me, it's not that they, it's not me, they are just different around female presenting people. And this like blew me away. I, I just, I was just like, I don't know how, I don't know how to process this. And because most of my friends are male, it wasn't somewhere that I could talk about it. I couldn't go to them and be like, yo, what do you like when I'm not there? Because apparently that's creepy. Um, so now I talk to audiences. <laughs> now, now I trauma dump on you guys. Um, so that's why I'm here, to start the conversation, to hope that if anybody has those experiences, if anybody has those even feelings and they're not sure about them, um, start the conversation with whoever you feel comfortable with. Um, so, to get into a bit more, I guess, factual, um, a brief history of games. So the first video game, you know what, all of these should have asterisks with them. I'm not going to fall off the stage. Um, because every time I Google these things, I come up with different answers. So please, by all means, tell me I'm wrong. I think the first video game was NIM in 1940. Um, the first home video, the first time that video games entered the home was 1972. Um, 1968, you got your first male protagonist, and then it was like over 10 years later that a female thought to put a female at the front of the game. Um, and this kind of this kind of shocks me a little bit because I I don't really know why 12 years. I actually thought that the first one was Lara Croft, and that was 1996, and that was even more like that's why she's over there because um, she's really cool. Um, but yeah, Billy Sue, you, I think you throw bananas at sheep or something. Um, I don't think you do, you throw something at something. You throw fruit at animals, I'm fairly sure. But you know, um, but yeah, there was, there was like 12 years of male protagonists before we got a female one. Um, so this got me thinking about Laura Croft because I thought she was the first. Um, she is really cool. She defied societal norms because she was really cool. She could fend for herself. She could, you know, do all the fighting. Um, she didn't need someone to come in and save her. She was knowledgeable. She had a degree. I don't know if it was a PhD, but she, she had a degree in um, archaeology. And the other characters in the game respect her for that. But there is a question in my mind of whether she was just created as a male character with female aesthetics. Like, did anyone actually put thought into who Lara Croft was? 
Or did they just go, let's just make a, a protagonist who is awesome? Um, did the bravery, intelligence, and strength that they gave her, was that to be representative of female? Or was that just for a good story? So this got me comparing to Aloy. So Aloy is from the Horizon series. Um, she's also very cool. She's also a badass. Um, she also saves herself. Um, much to my dismay when you know, she goes, oh yeah, we're going to progress the main plot. And, and my companion, no, you stay here. And I'm like, no, bring them, bring them. They can't die. I can. <laughs> like, um, she's also knowledgeable and respected. Like, she, she does a lot of thinking in those games and puts a lot together um, to come up with a really cool story. Um, so she's similar to Lara Croft in those ways. Um, but she wears more practical clothing. Um, the thing that always got me about Lara Croft was how she never died of hypothermia, um, to be honest. Um, and it, you know, if you're raiding tombs, I'm not sure that short shorts are really appropriate. I, I can bruise myself in my own house. Like, yeah. Um, Aloy doesn't wear a lot of makeup. I mean, if we just go back to the, the Lara Croft with like three polygons, um, she's, those eyebrows are perfect, and she's definitely wearing lipstick. And I don't know whether, I mean, I can barely be bothered to put makeup on in the morning, and I don't live in an apocalypse, and I just work in an office. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, Aloy has a lot less makeup, so it feels more realistic. She probably wouldn't be waking up, you know, quite, quite so made up. Um, but the thing about Horizon which struck me from the very beginning was um, how the other characters um, talk about her. Because they don't talk about her appearance, they don't talk about you know, what she looks like or love interests or stuff like that. They refer to her as brave. They talk about her, even the people that don't like her, they refer to her as things like outsider. They're talking about her character, like her personality, her character, not about what she looks like or who she's romantically interested in. So maybe this is progress. Maybe we've done it. Maybe I can finish and go home. Um, you probably have guessed that I don't think that. Um, so I, I thought I'm very aware of my own bias. And I don't necessarily think that bias is a bad thing because that's why I'm stood here, that's why I'm interested in this. Um, it's my own personal bias to be interested in this, as long as your bias isn't negatively impacting other people. Um, so, I did this a little bit ago, which is why it's 2022. But I looked at the top seven games um, from 2022, from game ranks, respective website, I'm sure, um, to come up with somebody else's list of games, just list of popular games. I wanted to see what the main female characters look like. Oh, um, I didn't miss out six on purpose. Six was Forza, I think it was, which are cars. They're all cars. Um, I tried hard to find a person. Um, there were none. Um, so, I pulled out the, the main characters from all of these, and I mean, one of them's a child, so try, we don't. I'm not going to really comment on the opinion of on the opinion <laughs> Freudian slipper on the appearance of children, um, but I don't. We've moved away from Lara Croft, but I still think that we we have a stereotype that we are sticking to. Um, there are, you know, five adult females there. One of them is a teenager, but five adult females there. You, they would all fit in each other's clothes. They would. They all have quite a similar face shape. Um, you know, they all have their own style, um, but we're still portraying an ideal of what we think women should look like. Um, so. Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe we can just keep churning that out. But I don't think so. Um, there is cultivation theory is the main one that, that sits with me. 
um, which says that the media we consume shapes us. So what we take in from the media is it, it you know, uh, has an effect on how we think and that sort of thing. And the repetition of information creates a biased truth. So there has been research into this. If you have repeated exposure to a lie, you basically end up believing it. Um, you have an increased likelihood of indicating that that piece of information uh, is true. Um, and this is quite scary um, because this means that every time we're looking at these images of women, we are looking at what we think a woman should look like, which means that every woman that doesn't fit into that is inherently wrong in some way. Um, I mean, this is a terrifying study. Um, both short and long-term exposure of objectified women was correlated with men being more accepting of abuse towards women. So I think it goes beyond just, this isn't what I like looking at, um, and into, into how, how you are perceiving and reacting to other people as well. Um, so I, I, think, I think it matters. I think the theory says it matters, not just my personal opinion, basically. Um, so the other thing that we thought about was maybe only men play video games. Maybe there are just so few women that play video games that it doesn't really matter. Um, no. <laughs> 48% um, of US gamers identify as female. Um, that's pretty much uh, the statistic in the UK as well, but um, when you do presentations for academic audiences, they like really, really nice references, and I can't find really, really nice references for the UK. Um, and about 70% of, of both men and boys and women and girls play video games. So you're looking at like huge numbers here. Um, so it matters. So it's not just that you are making games for boys to sell to boys, so they need to be appealing to boys. Um, there are women who play games too. Um, and that is not reflected in the industry. So this is 2022, which is a little bit out of date now. Um, I've seen this, st this statistic as low as 18 and as high as 31. Um, I've not seen higher than 31 which is still a massive number of people away from 50%, um, which is kind of terrifying. But maybe, maybe this explains why some, some of the women are not being created um, with as much depth as men, the male characters, that is, um, if the people that are creating them don't have the lived experience. Um, so, I, you can largely ignore this. Look at the pretty pictures. Um, if you're interested, um, I'm going to go through the research that I did um, really quickly. Um, if you're interested, this is the paper that, that me and uh, my colleague wrote. Um, if you go onto Google Scholar and type in better dead than a damsel, um, which is what Lilith says to Handsome Jack when uh, she gets captured, if anyone's interested because um, I like stealing pop culture references to name my stuff. Um, yeah, so you can read the full thing. I do say that Tomb Raider was the first female character, so you can just ignore that bit because you've had the correction. Um, so when we did that study, we predicted that games with a non-male protagonist will have a higher churn than those with a male protagonist. We thought that um, basically uh, that because it wasn't, probably wasn't women that were creating them, that, that the female characters might not be as well developed. We thought that, you know, that's, that sort of stuff, um, all the stuff I've talked about, we just put it together. Um, we looked at some, we basically we took 52 of the top games and we looked at the graph of player churn, of, which is like how quickly people drop the game. We looked at like the first week and the first three months, um, and we didn't find anything. We didn't find that, that they dropped off faster, which, great. Um, but we did find that games with a male protagonist initially got more players. Um, 
We didn't really look at whether or not they were bigger games or more well-funded or anything like that, so all of those factors um, could, could, could come into it. Um, but we thought, given the fact that 50% of gamers are female, it, chances are it's not just that people don't want female protagonists. Um, however, we did find that games with a non-male protagonist maintain their player base. And things like Horizon Zero Dawn were in um, the data set that we looked at. So we wondered whether it was something to, it was something to do with design. Um, because maybe more thought, if you're going to you know, go against the norm, if you're going to have a protagonist that isn't male, maybe you think about it a bit more. Um, but yeah, so we concluded that although the risk with the non-male protagonist is higher, you may not get all the players, um, the reward is loyalty, people play your game for longer. In this sample, um, the thing to note with this sample is we had games like Undertale. Um, I don't know how much you guys know about Undertale. Um, Undertale was released, um, spent ages being released, and then became popular. So like, the graph was just like off the wall. Um, so we, it included stuff like Horizon Zero Dawn and Undertale with like massively different player bases. Um, but you know, we were just kind of scoping things out. Um, so one of the reasons that we did it, we did our research like we did, we did quantitative research, we looked at statistics. Um, because there's not a lot of quantitative re research in this area, gender representation research tends to focus on asking people how they feel, and that's great um, for other people to do. I like, I like the data. Um, it's not going to sell to video games companies. Like, we sat down and we discussed it, and we were like, if we were going to write a paper that was just going to, like, blow up, you know, we can dream. Um, we need to be saying to games companies, this is affecting your money, this is affecting your income. Um, and showing them a load of interviews of people saying, yeah, but she doesn't look like me, probably isn't going to sell that in quite the same way. Um, and we, we think it's a really important area. Um, we think it's great that we, we didn't find that people dropped off faster in, in female protagonist games, um, but we think that there is a lot more to be done here, um, which, when my supervisor lets me, um, which will be after my PhD when he's not my supervisor anymore, um, I'm going to try. Um, and yeah, and then the other, I sort of, I guess, touched on this earlier. So uh, Iggy, the, the group I'm part of, has recently done research, and I don't think it was published. Um, I don't think it is published yet. Um, the different types of games um, should be treated separately. So they found um, we have a real thing against genres because genres are absolutely meaningless. And if you ask two different people what a cozy game is, you will get completely different answers. Um, but it's basically been found that different types of games should be treated differently. And we just lump them all in together in a you know, game soup. Um, so, kind of like, I guess, what's next for you and what's next for me. Um, I put non-binary representation, but actually, because I've, I've spoken this whole time about gender as if it's a binary, and I don't believe that, um, and I don't think it necessarily furthers the conversation to be talking about it like that, but the number of video games with a non-binary protagonist are so small that you can't do stats on them. Um, you're, it, you have to have like a certain number of, of data points to do stats, and they just aren't enough. Um, but actually, I, as I was driving here, I was thinking about this point, and I think it should just be representation of, of everybody. I think when you are creating characters, when you are creating art, I think you just need to really think about what, what are you portraying? How are you putting this person forward? Like this is, it, it doesn't really matter what you think of them as, but they are inevitably representing a group of people. Um, so it, it's gonna be important. Um, talk to each other. Um, as much as I wanted to throw things at my best friend when he told me that I was ruining conversations, um, 
having that conversation with him and finding out more in depth about what he thought um, really helped me be more aware of myself and more aware of other people um, and more aware of how people are perceiving me at any given point. Um, I mean, I have enough anxiety to be thinking about that a lot anyway, but like, I do kind of try and you know, now factor in their brain into, into that as well. Um, and then apply for the jobs. Um, I can't remember exactly the statistic, but I think it's that men apply for something like 20% more jobs than women. Um, and um, men will apply for the job if they meet something like 60% of the essential criteria, but women will not apply if they don't meet 100% on the whole. Um, and I think that the way to do this, the, the way to, to make everybody represented fairly, is to have lived experience in the design process. So I think that it's really important to go for the jobs that you love, do the things you love, and then you can put yourself in the art. Um, yeah, and that's, that's it. I am really bad at communicating. Um, so if you did want to tell me that this was rubbish or good, um, email me. <laughs> like, because that's my uni email, so I have to check that. Twitter, I don't even know anymore. Like, you'll maybe get like a three to four week response. And LinkedIn occasionally, but they just try and sell me the free trial, so um, email is the one. Um, or I will wander around after this, so you can come and talk to me. But yeah, that was everything. Thank you.